my name is Tolliver, Jal uh, uh, Tolliver uh, from uh, Planet Scale. I'm a uh, software engineer, and this is uh, Jiten. Jiten is the CEO of Planet Scale. So um, if you have all any questions, you should just ask him. <laughs> I'm here just to look pretty. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> better. <laughs> uh, so today we're talking. We're going to talk about Vitesse, uh, and which is, and this is called stateful storage on Kubernetes. Who uses MySQL? Uh, okay, that's good. <laughs> so maybe this is for you. Uh, so anyway, okay. Uh, oh, yeah, yo, uh, silly, okay, yeah, okay, plenty of seats. Uh, all right, so what is Vitesse? Uh, Vitesse uh, is right? Uh, it's a sharding middleware for MySQL. Sharding feng tian, I think, feng tian, <laughs> something. Uh, and it, what's beautiful is that it's massively scalable, and uh, it provides high availability, uh, like five nines <laughs> availability, and it's cloud native, so Kubernetes, etc. How many people use Kubernetes? How many don't use Kubernetes? No Kubernetes. Oh, everyone's Kubernetes. Oh, even better. <laughs> Great. So. Uh, who uses uh, uh, Vitesse? She uh, uh, Vitesse. You know, uh, so this cache app is uh, is Square Cache. Um, that's like Weixin the the pay, but for US. Uh, also YouTube. Uh, Vitesse came from YouTube originally, so they use it. Um, not Burger King and not Instagram yet. <laughs> uh, but th those are like the top apps uh, in the US, and so they're using it. So uh, here are some of the key adopters. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, so uh, how many have heard of uh, JD, Jingdong? Yeah. So Jingdong uses a lot of Vitesse. Uh, they're the, one of the biggest users in the world of Vitesse, and they have 3,000 or more databases, and they have 18,000 or more tablets or MySQL instances. So you know more than just one, so many. Uh, and maybe you guys don't use Slack as much, uh, but Slack, even them, uh, at least a qu one quarter, 25 percent, uh, have changed to Vitesse. So all the chatting is, is saved in Vitesse. Uh, again, before Square Cash, uh, also and. Pinterest, I don't know if you know what Pinterest is. So Pinterest also uses it for a lot of their advertising. So yeah, so these are some of the many adopters. Uh, and as there are adopters, there's also lots of people contributing, you know, changes, uh, um, P, uh, PRs, uh, to, and so includes lots of these companies. And they all, of course, are using Vitesse uh, in production. Am I speaking too fast, too slow? OK. All right. So yeah, I want you to think from now on, if you think Kubernetes and you want to store state, stateful storage, I want you to think Vitesse. OK? Um, why is that? Uh, there's actually someone, um, some famous uh, internet person, who says, uh, if you if you want to run stateful uh, applications on Kubernetes, you're pretty stupid. It, it, it's too hard, and and we agree, it's not easy. But um, and the reason is, uh, one does not simply move MySQL to Kubernetes. Because if you just try to do that, you're going to run into many problems. You know, your pods going down, your whatever going down. Everything goes down, right? Who who has a service that's perfect, never goes down? 
Anyone go down at all? Okay, people who go down, raise your hand. Only three people have problems? Okay. <laughs> then you don't need anything. <laughs> You're perfect. So, so just a few, few things about Vitesse. Uh, Vitesse started in 2010, um, and that's when uh, YouTube, uh, YouTube, who knows what YouTube is? It's like you cool for, for not China. <laughs> okay, so um, yeah, so uh, YouTube had started running into scaling problems with MySQL. Like many of you, they had just one super big MySQL instance. Of course, they had some backups and some uh, replicas, but you know they could had too much traffic, uh, and probably many of uh, you know websites in China, Vietnam, all. You guys have lots of web traffic, so uh, YouTube ran into some problems, and then so they needed to deal with it, and they have a big apps, <laughs> right? They don't want to rewrite. So Vitesse, uh, since it in 2010 there was no Kubernetes. Kubernetes was just is five years old now, and Vitesse is older than five years old. <laughs> so, um, but it was designed for Borg. So Borg is the precursor, the Google precursor to Kubernetes. So Vitesse, uh, I think, oh. Uh, so Vitesse was designed really for, really for Kubernetes as well, because it's all the same ideas. Uh, so yeah, production workloads. Um, so besides YouTube, of course, uh, Stitch Labs is the oldest one. So they started using in 2016, a few years ago, and then HubSpot has many key spaces, uh, or uh, maybe databases, as you may call them. Um, and JD has 3,000 databases with, as I said before, 18,000 E1 Baqian tablet, uh, right? And they have, I think they said 67 shards now, uh, or something, <laughs> on their largest. They have many databases, but that's just their largest one. Uh, and then there's another company here, um, Nozzle, and they migrate even between the clouds. So you know here you know Aliyun and you have Huawei Yun or something, and you and you want to migrate from one to another. So they do that. So you don't have to be tied to one uh, cloud. So uh, this was what I thought it was coming after. Uh, so. MySQL before, right? It's it's a old software, very good, but it was they merely adopted the cloud, whereas Vitesse was born in the cloud, right? It, we it was made for Borg, which is before Kubernetes, so so the whole point is it is cloud native, like it does not it did not exist without the cloud. Uh, so here is the the concrete architecture of Vitesse. Um, how many of you guys are running apps that are connecting to MySQL? Everyone? Yeah? OK. Uh, I'm going to stand over here. Is that OK? Yeah, OK. So um, the general architecture, Vitesse tries not to break anything. Uh, you, you have big apps. They're running lots of traffic. You don't want to break anything. So before, you have your app servers here, right? And they used to talk to a big MySQL uh, database, right? And they use MySQL binary protocol to connect, right? But uh, Vitesse is all of these blue, purple color. Uh, so they're this part and these parts. Uh, so, um, so it's a proxy. Uh, to all the MySQLs. And under the covers for, uh, for saving the data is actual MySQL. So you guys, you, we can actually migrate your MySQL workloads into Vitesse actually pretty easily. So what's important here is between the app server and what is these VP gates, these are the proxies, they speak MySQL binary protocol right here, MySQL. Okay, and there's a custom protocol here between these blue parts, and then all of these, uh, this software, the tablets, connect to actual MySQL instances under the covers, and they only talk this way. 
Does that make sense so far? Good. All right. So, but why would you want to use Vitesse? I mean, some, not everyone has, you know, Jingdong size uh, workloads or YouTube size or Yoke Yuko workloads, right? So why would you want to use it? I mean, if you have a small workload, uh, uh, like, so what are the benefits of using Vitesse? So this was your DB right now, right? Works just fine, it's all good. Uh, but you can actually already put Vitesse in between uh, your main DB and the app servers. And when you do that, it provides automatic connection pooling, it does uh, deadlines, like if you have very long running queries, you know, if you have an analysis. It also provides hot row protection, so if you have many apps uh, trying to get exactly one row, it will stop and, and pause that while giving other people quality of service, good quality of service. It also, yeah, enforces row count limits, so not too large queries. And it can also blacklist tables, like if you don't want certain applications to access certain things, you can, in the, because it's a proxy, it can also say, oh, I don't want you to access this, and you can cut off usage. So even for smaller workloads, it's okay to use this because it provides uh, benefits for your application, uh, your application developers. Sometimes they make mistakes, uh, have bugs, and then it won't take down the database for everyone else. Does that make sense? That's for smaller workloads. But then, once you've put it in, uh, you now have some be more benefits uh, as you start growing your workload. So again, before you had only the single database, and uh, maybe you had a few backups or replicas. But uh, with your growing workloads, uh, you can you had your previous main database, the master, uh, but, but with Vitesse, since it, can, it actually can parse all of the MySQL, uh, SQL, uh, it can actually decide uh, to be smarter. It can do replica routing. It can decide, oh, all you're doing are select statements, and decide, oh, you don't need to access everything, so you can go straight to our replicas to actually do the select. Uh, it, and thus, it can also do load balancing. You know, you have more, more connections and whatnot. And you can then use orchestrator as well if you need high availability, HA, uh, to do uh, failover or, or promotion. So you can choose uh, one replica. Oh, I want this one to become the master. And you can swap them. And to the, all the apps, it's invisible. So it's just all natural. So remember, MySQL protocol only happens here. Uh, and then oh, this is only management DBA access. Does that make sense? So yes, this is why as you're growing the workloads, if you have a lot of read traffic, you can add more replicas. No one knows the difference. And now you have even more traffic, or too much, uh, too much data to fit on one disk or many disks. So, uh, you can do a few things, and so with here, with a growing workload, uh, I can split. Before, I had only main DB, we'll call it DB1, right? And you had all of the traffic going there. And so you had to have a disk that's big enough for all of your data, right? But now we want, um, imagine you have two big tables. You know, they're growing, growing, growing big, and then they're gonna blow up in one table. So why don't we split them into two different ones, right? So with this, uh, you can split table one, like which is big, uh, into uh, keep it in database one, and then you have the other big table, table two, moving into database two. So yes, you have now you know table one in ta database one and table two in database two, but to your application server, um, because again it's proxying you can have a unified view. You can see both table one and table two like they were all in one big uh, MySQL. So, and again, just like before, each of the database one, you can have many replicas, and database two has different numbers of replicas. Make sense? 
So also, you can, with uh, this proxy, you can do C space subsetting. You can decide your application can only see table one and table two, and different application can only see table three and table four. So you can split that way too. All right, and as you grow even bigger, uh, remember table two is here, but table one's growing really, really fast, right? And maybe you're a, a big e-commerce website like Jingdong, and they decide, oh, we actually, we have too much write traffic. We're, we have too many orders happening all the time. And so table, table one, uh, it can be horizontally sharded. So uh, in this example here, we see three different shards. So just table one, uh, we can split into one third, one third, one third. Uh, and, and it will go to separate instances. So you can have now three times the write traffic, and you can still have many more times also the read traffic, and you can control that quality of service there. And whereas table two didn't grow very much, it's pretty constant, but still big, and it will have a different quality of service right here. But again, to the app server, it will all still look like one super big database. Make sense so far? Good. So, and then you get really, really big, <laughs> right? Um, so this is, again, a Jingdong style <laughs> one. And they have, uh, and not just Jingdong, but many other companies, also have, uh, before, it was all in one big data center or one availability zone. And now, when you have the massive workloads, you don't want you know, one bomb to break the data center. You, you want to be able to handle the failure, right? So we can split even with a, a single shard uh, into different availability zones. So this gives you other high availability options, right? Before, it was only for the reading reason, but now in case one goes down, we can split and have more high availability. You know, here's zone one, two, and three. Yes? Uh, Vitesse will handle, uh, sorry, yeah, yeah, my, I'm, yeah, yeah, MySQL connects the actual replicator. So replication. you replicated the data from through the MySQL binary? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, other questions? Is that no. answer your question? Okay, cool. Uh, all right. Thank you, Jaten, for answering. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so even for, as you go really, really big, you're, go, you're going to need extra, extra, High availability, and that's the benefits here. Okay, so uh, some demo time. Uh, this demo is very simple, very stupid, but everyone can run it on their own laptops. And I'm going to demonstrate by running on my laptop. <laughs> so um, this is a schema, marketplace schema. It doesn't really matter. It's just got four tables. My actual demo only has three tables, but whatever. Same idea. This was all one big main DB. And uh, we have a product table, customer, orders, and merchants. But uh, in my demo, we only have less. OK, so I am going to demonstrate this. I have already brought up a, um, let me show databases. So this is actually my SQL. Uh, let me let's see, make it bigger. Can you see? Is it okay? Yeah. So I just I just uh, brought up a MySQL. I actually brought up three instances of uh, MySQL and behind the tests. And if you see databases, we see only a commerce database. And inside commerce database, we actually see three uh, tables here. Something called order. It's called C order, but order, customer, and product. Okay. Make sense so far? And, and I will show you there's some data in this, uh, in each of the tables. It just selected, showed all the tables. OK? But uh, all right. So that's just the data, the current one in the main DB. OK? So uh, 
Next, you know, maybe again I said uh, table one and table two got too big and maybe wanted to split into two databases, one DB1 and DB2. So here, when we shard, we can decide, oh, all of the products go into one, one database and we'll make, we'll make another customer database uh, yeah, called customer and orders. So we'll move two of the tables from the original main DB into what a new one we'll call customer DB. Does that make sense? All right, so how do we do that? Uh, good question, I have no idea. Okay, um, so I, we have some scripts here and these are actually on the Vitesse uh, website tutorial. So you guys can, uh, get the code from Vitesse and actually just run these tutorials yourself. It's exactly the same. I'm just showing you, okay? So um, let me show you what we're doing. So sorry if this is too small or can't read. Uh, there's, these are actual commands from Vitesse. I'm just showing you what's in the, the script. It, it creates a key space. Key space is a database like database two, and named um, named commerce, and it says to route all of the traffic for it. Or, or sorry, make sorry. Customer, uh, I'm making a new customer database, and then but all of the traffic for the customer database actually goes to a place called commerce, the old database, the main DB. Okay, so. I'm only just going to run this command here, uh, and it's done. Um, and then there's a few other things. Uh, this with the next uh, the me next command I'm running just brings up more instances of uh, MySQL, uh, three more instances uh, for the tablets. So here we go. Literally starting my SQL, I will now talk to wait for the time. <laughs> so it's just bringing up more. But of course, while I'm accessing this, again, I'm I can still see all of the uh, what's called all of the data from the original main database. Nothing's changed, right? Um, as I wait for that, <laughs> and the point is, uh, in in these steps. We're bringing up new databases, and then we're going to slowly move the traffic from seeing all of the data in uh, main database to a different one. Uh, but all is uh, it's invisible to the app server, in this case, the MySQL client. So as you can see here, it's bringing up MySQL and also bringing up the, the little tablet that, that's on, attached to each MySQL. And uh, yeah, okay, great. So it also has set a master in the new uh, database too. Uh, and so we'll see this working, hopefully. Uh, let's see, show databases. Oh look, we now have two databases. Before it was commerce only, and now we have customer database. Um, and so, uh, give me a second. Okay, before I do that. So I'm going to go to the customer database, right, and show what tables we have. Uh, we show, we have some tables, um, but so all the traffic uh, for, if we wanted to select from the customer database, it will look like uh, it came from the other database, or it will, behave like it would come from the other database. But it looks like it's also available in this uh, in database two, the customer database. Okay, um, sorry. Um, so from there, oh, I, and I can still access, as before, all the data. Um, let's see. Okay. So actually, now, uh, before I was getting all the data from the uh, database one, the main database, but now uh, my new script, 
just uh, gets the data from the second database, and it shows that it's available there as well. Okay. And now, uh, one of these scripts here is a vertical split. So vertical split is the moving of tables from database one to database two. Uh, I can show you the code here. It's literally just one command. It's the rest is environment variables that is uh, splitting off the data. So it's doing some stuff. What did it do? Who knows? <laughs> um, let's see. So what it actually did there is, it, again, we had new empty databases, and it copied all the data from one to another, and then from there continuously replicates uh, from, even if you write the, to table, table two in uh, old database, it will start, you will start seeing it in table two in new database. So it sets up, it does the copy and then replication from then on as well. So that is what this command just did. Uh, so still nothing different here. Actually, again, we haven't moved any pointers for what data we're reading. We're still reading from the old database, even if you now, as you change your app, go to read from the new database. So uh, the next step here, uh, is it visible? At the bottom, okay. We're going to migrate where we read the data. So kind of to go back here, yeah, yeah kind of here. Right, uh, before it was pointing originally, uh, all of the queries were going here. But now we're going to actually say, just for the replicas, the read only, tra or the reading traffic, hey, let's, let's go read from here and not here anymore. So we can, there are independent pointers to go, instead of pointing from here, point to that one. So, um, So uh, the inside the shell script, it's just saying move both the read-only and the replicas over. Say, but not the master yet. So this is all the read traffic. So migrate, uh, select customer zero. Still looks the same. Remember, if it if it all looks the same, that's good. If it's not the same, then something's wrong. <laughs> so yeah, uh, still selecting, no problem. And then our last one is migrate the master. Uh, so migrate the master, same command, only instead of saying read only a replica, it says, says master. So master is you've decided to change all of your writing traffic over to your new place. OK? And by the way, before we even do this, uh, you, here, I mean, I right now I have moved my read traffic from replica read only, right? I've moved it here, but maybe I have a problem. Actually, you can still reverse because this is a pointer. So you can decide, oh, I want to reverse, and I can go back to reading this. So in case you're worried, you can try it, and if it has problems, just move it back. You know, and then you can debug, try it again, no problem. So, but once you move the master, to the new one, well, now all of your stuff is there. So that's what we're about to do right now. Migrate the master. Oh, pretty fast. Even in production, this should be a very fast switchover. Uh, you know, maybe a one second or, or less uh, delay uh, just to propagate all of the configuration information. Because again, all of the replication, all the copies have been happening all of this time. Okay? Uh, yeah, that, so uh, I've migrated the master. I can still see that. Everything still looks okay. Uh, that is the whole demo, by the way. <laughs> it's not very much. Um, so, so we went from one big database to splitting it, in this example, uh, splitting off tables. It can do horizontal scaling and split that way too. Just don't have time to actually show in this example. Uh, 
So how does all of this work under the covers? This is actually one of the keys of the tests. Uh, we call V replication or Vitess replication. It is filtering all of the replication. So as you see here, uh, originally we had some tables here, and maybe and uh, you we can set up different types of composable replication, whatever, and we can have, for example, the order information propagate over this way. We can. This is a horizontal shard example right here. Uh, the, this is for what's called the different shard names. Uh, it's like half of the traffic uh, go over here, or half of the traffic go over here. So because this might have two shards, split you know, uh, shard one, some of the row data, and split the other, the other half. So, so it's all doing filtered amounts of replication. So it's not doing everything. Uh, so all of this is composable. Oh, yeah. When you have multiple shards, how do you handle joins? Good question. Uh, so the question is whether you have. Uh, actually, do you mind if I answer that at the right at the end? We're really close. Um, if this is going too long, forgive me. <laughs> um, does this generally make sense? So with with this V replication. Uh, these are the benefits. You can have materialized views. You can have real-time roll-ups. Resharding, again, this is the before it was actual examples of resharding in real time under the covers. Uh, back, backfilling of lookup vindexes. So vindex is a, a Vitesse index. It, it's how you decide which shard to go to when you're looking up data or inserting data. And sometimes your primary index is not what you want, like you have authentication table, you have a, or user ID, maybe you have user email. If you just want to look up where your given email is, uh, you need to also figure out which shard. So th the secondary lookup index, the Vindex, is what that's for. Um, also, it allows for different schema deployments and data migration and yeah, change notifications in general. So the, the, the beauty of all, how all of the tests works uh, especially is with this V replication to do all the sharding and, and to uh, yeah, keep everything in sync. Does that generally make sense? All right. Uh, all right. Um, this is the end of the talk. Um, uh, I'm just going to say some things and then we'll open up to questions. Is that okay? All right. So, yeah, we have a Slack channel uh, that's at vitesse.io. Vitesse.io is where the open source project is hosted. Uh, we have a WeChat group. Um, we, you should come to us uh, only because WeChat has problems with more than 100 users at a time or some other uh, limits. <laughs> so come to us, we'll, we'll add you to the WeChat group. Uh, also, uh, this is again was the introduction talk and Jiten over here uh, will be giving another talk, uh, a more advanced one uh, on when we actually bring down uh, for disaster recovery, bring down you know shards or bring down masters and etc. What happens? Yeah, I can edit this to show you that. Uh, and then also we're going to have another talk about translation of documents. Uh, for Vitesse. Right now, unfortunately, all the uh, documents are only in English. So, uh, so it would be great if we had some translation stuff. And so if you would come by with that, we can uh, talk about how we are going to be doing that. Uh, also, at, just like I'm running on my laptop, we would love for you to try uh, bringing up a cluster on your own laptops. And we can help you out with that. Read the code. And you can read some blog posts from uh, Square Cash about their deployments of Vitesse, all the problems. And actually, even Jing Dong, like, they just gave a talk on other problems and how they solve them with Vitesse. Uh, so you can, and he, uh, this person here can talk about them if you're curious. Uh, I'm on Slack on the Vitesse uh, Slack channel as at Tolliver. And there's, I know Twitter not accessible, but if you can access it with VPNs or whatever, uh, you can use these things to access. 
Does that make sense? All right, so uh, open to questions now. Sorry, um, uh, whoever you are, <laughs> sorry. Can you uh, repeat your question? Oh, can you? Yeah. Points when you have sharded tables, vertical and horizontal. Right, good question. So uh, the ideal case is you don't do anything wrong, but um, you have single shard stuff. Like if you have a user table, authentication table, you can co-locate like based on user ID, uh, like all the user ID data for both tables be in one shard. That's the best option. But of course, once you go across, what, how do you handle that? So we have, um, what's it called, uh, three modes, or two modes here for cross shard, um, what's it called, cross shard um, transaction modes. Uh, we have a best effort uh, where, you know, you, uh, where, you can, um, where you can have each one independently transact. And of course, you have the default, or not default, the two-phase commit option. Uh, so it can two-phase commit across. Uh, that's for inserts. But for joins as well, um, all of the, let me go back to the architecture diagram here. Here we go. Yeah, so you see actually that VT gate, the proxy, actually does talk to all of the tablets. And remember, it does parse all of the SQL, and it actually also uh, collects all of the results from all of the different places and can, and can uh, do all your joins at that place if necessary. Does that answer your question? Yeah, so yeah, because each gate goes to all the different tablets. So, and remember, there's not just one tablet here. You can scale this. I think Jingdong, you guys have like a thousand VT gates or some, yeah, something like that. So it's not just one. You can do many more than one. Uh, so uh, does that answer your question? OK, great. Any other questions? Yes? I have a multi master cluster uh, replica from Amazon to uh, Alibaba. Uh -huh. So I want to m support, I want to m use uh, Vitex. So can I uh, migrate to it uh, without downtime? Uh, Jiten, do you want to answer this one? Uh, let's. Oh. You have a master in Alibaba, and you have a master in Alibaba and a replica. in AWS, and th that one is running in e EC2 instance. OK, and what is it that you want to achieve? I, I want to apply first to maintain multi-master. OK, so Vitess does not uh, support multi-master, because multi-master is not a great architecture in our opinion, because uh, it can lead to issues when you have rights going to both the masters, and they need if there are conf conflicting rights. So for a given shard, we always send the rights to a single master. So even if you have a multi-master architecture, your rights would go to one or the other. And we then we would allow you to fail over to start sending rights, say, from AWS to the other one or vice versa. Yes, the case we use the multi-master because we have a user in China mm -hmm. and we have a user in our China. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like some u uh, China user, uh, Chinese user, so they want to upset our, our web application. Mm -hmm. um, so they just insert the data into the database in China. Okay, so that's yep. why you don't have any conflicts because you have tenant-based yeah, yeah. uh, something like that architecture. But we still uh, for the manager, so they have to outside. They need to see the data of both. So right. that's why we. Ha I mean, I will answer a more general question, which is that you can run your masters in one cloud, replicas in another cloud. You need to make sure that you have an IPsec tunnel through them so that you're, you're not sending packets unencrypted across public network. Yeah. Uh, but you can fail over. Vitess will allow you to fail over from US uh, from from one cloud provider to another, and will also allow you to spin up clusters across cloud providers. Yeah, understood. A actually, um, we can actually talk about the sharding, right? I mean, you can actually shard um, based on your tenant. You know, you are saying that you know there are some uh, Chinese provide uh, users, right? And so you can have them in uh, one shard and others in different shards. And remember, each of the tablets, each of the masters, they can, you can individually select where they are. So uh, again, you can have the unified view. But um, again, based on this one, you can actually 
have uh, a custom sharding scheme. You can write your own sharding mechanism. So you, if you know that user one is a China user, user two not China user, you can shard in that way. Does that make sense? Okay. Yep. Uh, I want to ask about um, because I see that um, you uh, moving out, uh, moving out the um, uh, table, um, a table to the database. So I I I want to the understand. So uh, what uh, what they need to be changed in the application to the uh, uh, for example we have the uh, version one collect to the database with the table. But we have the version two collect to data by, uh, collect to the uh, uh, so the table the, as the that's the beauty by. of Vitesse, right? As long as your the name of the table is ident if if the name of the table does not collide between key spaces, your application doesn't need to know. Your application just can continue to write to VT gates, and VT gate will send those writes to the correct uh, database where that table exists. So as long as both key spaces don't have the same table name, if so there is the same table name, then you have to, then you have to specify it in the table name. This is the uh, unified view. So it looks like just one big one, but yeah. under the covers, there's a database form. And Correct. Database so if D DB one had table one, table two, and you moved it to DB two, after that split happens, your ah, app okay. doesn't need to change at all. So Okay, I see, I see, I see. Thank you. No questions? Oh, yeah. Uh, if I'm very concerned about the load latency. So, why, uh, if how we, we test can help me? I'm very concerned about the transaction latency. Correct. So transaction latency at high write va volumes is what you're worried about, right? Yeah. yeah. So Vitess itself adds a little bit of latency to every query or every transaction because you have to do, if you go back to the architecture diagram, there are two network hops that it has to do, right? Your application is connecting to VTGate, from VTGate it's connecting to VT tablet, and from VT tablet it's connecting to MySQL D. Yeah. So it adds about four to five milliseconds of latency to every query. But because you can horizontally shard uh, your write QPS on every master is a lot less. And that's why your latency ends up being a lot less than it would be if you were writing on a single large master. Does that answer your question? So yeah, it, it, uh, it may add a little bit of latency to any single uh, query, but it will increase your throughput by quite a lot. Does that answer your question? Okay. Any other questions? All right. Uh, if not, thank you very much uh, for coming. Again, uh, I'm Tolliver, and this is Jiten, and we're from Planet Scale. We do Vitesse things. <laughs> uh, and I think we have some Vitesse. Here? Uh, we may have a few, but not too many, unfortunately. Um, anyway, if you have any other questions you'd like to talk in private, feel free to come over. Uh, probably outside, I think the next talk is coming. Okay, thank you very much.